Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome to Bhakti Sangha Jepa conference call. Today, we are very, very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Moli Swami Maharaj to enlighten us on topic, uh, Glories of Bhakta Hanuman. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. All glories to you, Maharaj. Please take over the call, Maharaj. <laughs> Om Gyan Timiranda Shya Gyanar Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Ti Namane Namaste Sarasmati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirishisa Sunyavari Pastyatyari Satarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We have just finished uh, narrating for many days some of the pastimes connected with the appearance, activities of Lord Sri Ramachandra. So now we're going to move into keeping that Ramlila mood. So now we're going to move into the glories of Sri Hanumanji. Uh, actually, Hanuman's appearance day comes on the 27th of this month, which is usually five to six days after the appearance of Shiva. So we'll uh, be. Uh, for the next few days, starting today, we'll be uh, speaking about Hanuman. And Hanuman is very glorious in that, that he is worshipped practically all over the subcontinent of India. He is uh, the son of the wind god, Bayu. And he appears in different manifestations to perform his service to Lord Ram. How he appears, he also appears differently. <laughs> Slightly different. Um, there are a couple narrations that are similar, but also different. Hanuman also is connected directly with uh, the powerful Lord Shiva. He's also known as the 11th Rudra. Uh, there's a story, there's two stories that are connected with his appearance at different kalpas. One story is when uh, Shiva was in Kailash with his wife Parvati and Shiva noticed that it was a monkey there. So he decided to take the form of a monkey. And then his wife Parvati, seeing that she took the form of a monkey also. So then they uh, united and there was a conception. <laughs> and now um, they returned back to their original forms as Shiva and Parvati. But now there was a conception that was about to give birth in due course of time. Uh, Shiva said to Parvati, you're gonna have to bear this conception. She said, no way. I already did this once before and I gave birth to a elephant. I'm not gonna give birth to a monkey. <laughs> So Shiva was thinking what to do. 
So he decided to transfer it to some of the other demigods. So then he was thinking of Agni, but then Agni had done him a favor once before. And then Agni said, that's all. <laughs> so now he called Vayu and he explained the situation and the conception was given to Vayu. Vayu first protested and saying, you know, Shiva, you are very hot. If I take this conception, I am the wind god and I'm supposed to give cooling winds. So all my winds will be blowing hot. Shiva said, by your intelligence, you'll figure out what to do. So feeling obliged to Shiva, he took the conception and then he went down to see where he could deposit this conception. He came down to the Mandakini River and there were a group of Saptarishi sages. And he told them he had this conception that he had to dispose of somewhere. He said, well, what is, the, what is about this conception? Oh, it's actually a powerful energy of Lord Shiva. And Shiva informed me that once this child is born, he will be a, a main uh, associate of Lord Ramachandra to assist him in his pastimes when he appears on earth. Oh, so the uh, sages became very uh, endowed with wanting to help. <laughs> so they found a metal type leaf, it was a leaf that was in the, sh that was a very, it had the power of metal. So the conception was placed on the, there. And in due course of time, now we switch to another place where in the heavenly planets, uh, Brihaspati is there and he has a, a maidservant and she's taking care of some of his personal needs. So uh, one day she's supposed to go gather flowers for his puja. And when she goes to this one area to gather flowers, there are some Gandharvas there and they're engaged in conjugal activities. So she becomes uh, affected by seeing what she saw. And then when she returned to Brihaspati, she immediately, <laughs> in her mood of emotion, she jumped on Brihaspati while he was doing his puja <laughs> and started to offer loving embraces. Uh, Brihaspiti says, says, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm in my puja. You're acting like a monkey. Become a monkey. <laughs> so immediately she, her form transformed into a monkey. And then he said, oh my God, I wasn't even angry, but the curse took effect. <laughs> and then she didn't know what to do. And Brihaspiti said, well, actually, um, we can relieve you of this situation. But first, there's um, Shiva has appeared and he's about to appear. You have a service to do to bring about the son of Shiva into the world. Brihaspati is the, uh, he's the guru of the demigods. So he has this knowledge. She said, what should I do? He said, you should go to this area of Kinshkinda and you should stay there. And there is one very powerful monkey king. His name is Keshari. Another name of uh, uh, Anuman is Kesh Kesari Putra. He's also known as Anjana Putra. Anjana was the maidservant that uh, came and jumped on <laughs> Prihaspati. So she was sitting up in a tree and then Keshari came and Keshari saw her and he decided that this would be a great person for my wife. So he married her and after some time, the conception manifested. The, the, the Saptarishis had transformed the, transferred the conception back to uh, Vayu and Vayu carried that conception. And one day when Anjani was there, 
he appeared to her in an invisible way and placed the conception within her and he spoke a few words and she was un she couldn't see who it was but at the same time she was feeling this great force coming and then he spoke to her please have this child and as soon as the child is born you may return to your place in the heavenly planets so she agreed and then after some time this powerful force was born it was a monkey with the features of a human and the features of a monkey together, mostly a, no, mostly a monkey. And he was, when he was first born, he immediately grew to the size of a boy of 16 years old. And this was the power of Lord Shiva. And then his mother said, oh, you are born? Okay, I'm destined to return to the heavenly planets. So I, I'm leaving. He said, how, you're leaving? You're my mother. You're supposed to feed me. What will I eat? She said, well, you're a monkey. You can find some nice big red fruit and eat that. So, and then she immediately left. So Hanuman, he uh, was thinking, where can I find some red fruit? And then he looked up into the sky and he saw this gigantic beautiful piece of fruit floating in the sky. It was actually the sun itself. <laughs> and so he was going to attack the sun. Well, as he was coming closer and closer to the sun, he wanted to swallow the sun. And one narration has said he did swallow the sun and another narration said he didn't. But in this one narration, it said that he swallowed the, swallowed the sun and then Indra was sitting in his heavenly planet speaking to Agni. Agni was there with him. And Indra said, what happened? Where, where all the lights went out? <laughs> well, Agni said, I don't know, but I think something is happening. She, she go check. You have the power, use your, use your Raja. Your, Raja means his uh, thunderbolt weapon. So, he summoned his thunderbolt ribbon and then got on his uh, carrier, Airavati, and went to find out what happened to the sun. <laughs> so then he saw this monkey chasing after the sun. So he took his uh, raja and threw it at him, which is his thunderbolt weapon. Now that thunderbolt weapon hit Hanuman in the chin and broke his chin. And when that happened, he fell to the earth and he was unconscious. When Vayu found out that his son had been hit by injury with a thunderbolt, he became very upset. And he came down to see what was happening and tried to bring his son back. He did, and then he got very angry. And then because he's the wind god, he withdrew all the air within the universe just to punish, you know, Indra and the Devas. So he withdrew all the air. And now nobody could breathe. <laughs> None of the planets could float properly. So they all went to Vayu, all the demigods, Surya, Agni, Indra, and others, saying, you know, you know, uh, Indra was apologizing. Is there anything we can do? Yes. And then they all, then Hanuman, of course, he came back to consciousness after some time. And they wanted to offer Hanuman some benediction. So they each offered him a particular benediction. So Indra offered him that you will not be killed by any weapon in existence. Uh, Brihaspati offered him that you will be, you will know all the, all the knowledge and all the conclusions of all Vedic scriptures. Surya, uh, hmm, let's see. Uh, Agni gave him the 
the benediction that he would not be burnt by fire, because we remember that pastime later. And uh, Bayou gave him the benediction that he would he would travel as fast as the wind. <laughs> So now he's a young boy and he has all his benedictions. And so he, he starts harassing some of the sages and he's causing havoc with the sages. And the sages are getting a little, so they go to Bayou and say, you know, your son is causing so many problems. You know, we're trying to do our pujas. He's a monkey and he's using all these powers just to cause us disturbances. And so Bayou said, all right, then we'll, we'll give him a benediction that he will only remember he has these powers and be able to use them when someone reminds him. Right now he will forget. So they, a curse was put on Hanuman that he would forget all the powers he had and only when he was reminded. And we see later on when they were, the monkeys were at the shore of India wanting to get to Lanka, all the monkeys were trying to determine whether they could fly all the way across to Lanka, which was 800 miles. And Jambavan, the king of the bears was there. He was the oldest of all. He understood the power of Hanuman. He also knew the benediction curse that he had received. So he said, Hanuman, Hanuman, you can do it. You have the power. When he reminded Hanuman of his powers, immediately Hanuman became aware of his powers. And then of course, we'll speak about that in another day, how he jumped across the ocean and uh, found Mother Sita in Lanka. Now he's giving, the, he's got all these benedictions. And, and so, Uh, let me think, will we? Mm -hmm. Okay, we can speak a little bit about um, Hanuman and his uh, trek across the ocean. Uh, we'll fast forward a little bit where Sita has been understood by Sampati. Sampati is a very powerful eagle. He's the brother of Jatayu. And he, eagles, we all know eagles have tremendous vision. Prabhupada said a vulture, they're vultures. They can see a body from three miles away. That's how powerful their eyesight are. And so Sampati understood and gave the message that Sita had been taken to Lanka. And so when the monkeys had gathered under the guise of Ram, Hanuman was also there. Now they had to get across the ocean. And um, of course, this was after when Hanuman jumped back. But I'll narrate how Hanuman crossed the ocean. And this is an interesting story. Hanuman was so powerful, and he's the son of the wind god. He was standing on the shore of India, which we know today is India. <laughs> Maybe then they had a different name. <laughs> um, and he now he's, he's preparing himself to grow, jump across the ocean. So he crouches down, getting ready to jump. As soon as he crouched down, uh, all the vegetation started to hide. <laughs> the trees, the plants, and all the, the vegetation around started to go into the ground. When Hanuman sprung open his jump, the power of his jump, the force of the wind that created the, that accompanied his jump was so powerful 
the trees were flying in the air. All the vegetation that were hiding in the ground came forcibly out and were thrown into the air. Anuman's jump was so powerful. And now he's flying through the air on his 800 mile trip across the ocean. While he's going, Samudra, who is the, uh, the god of the ocean, he appears and he uh, sees that, oh, here is Hanuman and he is going on a mission. I'm sure he needs some resources, some rejuvenation. So from the ocean, by the command of Samudra, Mount Minda comes out of the ocean and, and appears right in front of Hanuman on his trip across. This, uh, this mountain was huge and on the mountain there were so many wonderful gifts of nature, fruits and herbs and roots and various places for one to find, you know, uh, natural happiness, uh, beautiful scenery, so many things. So now the mountain comes to offer service to Hanuman. Hanuman's fixed. He's not interested in uh, breaking his, his uh, jump just for his own personal pleasure. So here's a little message here that we can derive that when a devotee is engaged in devotional service, or when a devotee engaged in devotional service is always thinking how to serve and how to serve in the best way. They don't want to get deviated in their service. Their service is their life. Sometimes something will come along to divert their attention away for something personal. But they'll think this is simply a distraction and a delay in the execution of my service. So therefore they're not interested. They're interested only in serving the Lord. So Hanuman is a gentleman. He offers his respects by folding his hands to the mountain and thanks him for the offering and then continues on his way. Uh, as he continues, there is one uh, Rakshashi, her name is Sarasa. I believe her name is Sarasa. And she appears out of the ocean. She's a hideous Rakshashi. And she grabs Hanuman's shadow. And Hanuman can't move because his shadow is being and then he sees it's this Rakshashri. And then she turns to him and said, oh, monkey, no one passes here without passing into my mouth. Therefore, I will devour you. <laughs> so she opens her mouth to consume Hanuman. And Hanuman gets bigger than her mouth. And she opens her mouth wider, he gets twice the size. She opens even wider, he gets even bigger. So this keeps going, going, going. Finally, he becomes so big that she, she can't open her mouth anymore. Finally, he shrinks down to the size of a little monkey and he runs around in her mouth and comes out and says, I have honored the benediction that no one passes here without entering your mouth. Now, please give me passage. She says, oh, monkey, you are very intelligent. May you be blessed on your journey. And then Tanaman goes. And now, again, as he's flying, another Rakshashi, Sim, I think her name is Simica. Yeah. Simica, she appears and she's vicious. She says, oh, monkey, 
now it's time for my prashadam. So she goes to grab Hanuman and eat him. And Hanuman again performs the, the mystic power of getting so big that her mouth is too small for him. And so she extends her mouth. She also has mystic power. And this again, the same scenarios played out. They're each getting bigger and bigger. And finally, Hanuman again gets small, goes into her mouth, goes down into her body, takes her heart and rips it apart and comes out. She screams in pain and falls into the ocean. Dead. <laughs> Jai Shri Hanuman. <laughs> So now he continues on his way. Finally, he reaches Lanka and it's dark. It's, uh, it's actually at the end of the night, but it's still dark. And then Hanuman comes and now he wants to disguise himself. So he changes his form into a small little cat. <laughs> and he's walking around and then all of a sudden, the, the, the guard of Lanka, Lankini, she appears and says, oh, where are you going? You cannot come here. This is, Ra this is Ravana's abode. Uh, and then she goes to grab him. And then Hanuman changes his form into a monkey. And then he slaps her and she falls back. This Lankini, she, she was actually a, a very good person. She was in the heavenly planets at one time. She was in the assembly. She was a, a Gandharva or an Apsara, or one of the society girls in Brahma's planet. But she had been dancing and she was dancing in the wrong way in a very, uh, what we say, licentious way. <laughs> so therefore, then she became cursed to fall from there and take birth in the Rakshashi family. So when she saw Hanuman, she tried to stop him. And then Hanuman, after he defeated her, and then she said, that actually Lord Brahma told me that at one time one monkey will come and he will defeat me. And then that will be the beginning of the end of Ravana's kingdom. And thank you for relieving my, of me of my curse. I have been cursed to fall into this situation. Now I can return back to the heavenly planets. And she blessed Hanuman as much as she could. He doesn't need her blessings, but she did. And then Hanuman uh, left, and then he was sneaking around looking for Mother Sita. So I'll describe the story of Mother Sita in a different, because that is such a long, long story how uh, the interchange between Sita and Hanuman. So these are some of the initial pastimes of Hanuman's appearance on this earth. The son of the wind god, he's also the son of Lord Shiva. Uh, in another manifestation of his appearance, it was the, again, it was the uh, potency of Lord Shiva that was captured and given to Anjana at that particular time. And that was connected to the pastime of Mohini Murti when uh, Shiva approached Lord Krishna and said, I heard you have changed yourself into a beautiful woman. Uh, I want to see that form. And Shiva had never seen it. Krishna said, Shiva, I don't think you should see this form. It's not, it may not be good for you. She was insistent. The Lord said, all right. And then it's described in the Bhagavatam in detail, how she appeared in that form as Mohini Murti, as the most beautiful. Krishna is always the most beautiful. And when he appears as a woman, you can imagine 
the extent of that beauty. No, you can't imagine. We can't imagine. We can't even imagine uh, the beauty that is that is available on this planet. What to speak of? What, what Krishna can manifest in terms of beauty? Some people say that Krishna is beautiful, but there's others that give a different explanation. They say that Krishna. It's not that Krishna is beautiful. Krishna is beauty itself. Beauty gets its description from Krishna. <laughs> so when Shiva chased after Mohini Murti, and then he lost his potency, and that was collected, and then later given to Anjana, and that was another manifestation of the appearance of Hanuman. So Hanuman's connected with the wind god, Vayu, He's also connected with Shiva. He's also connected with Keshari, the, uh, the monkey king who was living in Kishkinda, who married Anjana and one of the appearances of... Uh, so Hanuman is very an interesting personality. And we hear how he assisted in a very big way. In fact, we even say that Hanuman was actually the hero of the entire Ramayana. He was the one that found Sita. He was the one that. <laughs> he was the one that found Sita. He was the one that uh, um, saved Lakshman when Lakshman was being had been killed or not killed, but almost killed by the javelin of of Indrajit, and he brought that mountain back and then. The herbs were on the mountain. They were administered to Lakshman. So Hanuman is actually one of the, it is actually, when you look at it, it's he is actually the hero of the whole Naramayan, is Hanuman. He's the one that introduced the Ram and Lakshman to Sugriva. And by that alliance he made with Sugriva, all the monkeys came together and assisted Ram and Lakshmi. Smalang Lakshman in the battle against Ravana. So the glories of Hanuman are unlimited. Um, he's a very powerful son of the wind god, also the son of Lord Shiva. And uh, devotees pray to Hanuman in different ways for his mercy. We pray to Hanuman that to have determination to stay fixed in devotional service. Hanuman, all he knew was how to serve Ram. And that was his fixation. He didn't know anything else. And there are many, many beautiful stories about Hanuman and how his dedication to Ram continued even during the time when the past, when the Lord disappeared from the earth and his leelas had completed. Hanuman continued to worship uh, Ram, waiting for his appearance again in the next millennium. And those of you who are familiar with the culture throughout India, you know that Hanuman is there everywhere. We had the good, good fortune to go to Hampi in the year 2014 on a pilgrimage, Humpy is the place where Hanuman appeared and there's a beautiful temple on top of a mountain. The mountain is about 500 stairs up. <laughs> it's, a, it's a difficult climb for most people, but devotees were enthusiastic and we went up to the top and on the top there there's two or three temples and one of the temples there is a beautiful form of Anjana, and in her arms, she's holding this little monkey, and that is Hanuman. So you can see the Vatsaya Ras between Anjana and Hanuman in this beautiful deity. And there's other deities there also of um, Sita Ram Lakshman, like that. Okay, so uh, I'll conclude here and see if there's any one who would like to speak something or ask some questions. <laughs> Hare Krishna. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for such a beautiful, beautiful class. Uh, it's very nice to hear from you, Maharaj. Is there anybody having any questions for Maharaj? Please go ahead. Not just questions, but one can speak if they want about Hanuman, if they want to. Mm -hmm. oh, Maharaj, yes, let's have a discussions and realizations with Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as Arjuna Shri Prabhupada. Can you hear me? Yes, Srinivas Acharya, Hare Krishna. Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, so happy so to nice. see you. <laughs> so happy to time. see you. <laughs> I, I remember I, when we met in India. Not, yes, a in Mayapur. Yeah. Yes, yes, Maharaj. I was thinking of a story you, you told me. Even Lord Chaitanya's pastime, devotees were doing kirtan and climbing the trees. Uh, I, I don't remember which devotee who was screaming him, Hanuman, um, uh, from, from yeah. the tree. Do you remember, Maharaj? Could you please uh, tell that pastime? Yeah, it was, it was this, he was calling out the name of Angara, the son of Sugriva, <laughs> and jumping from the tree. It doesn't mention which particular associate of Lord Nityananda it was, but he was in the mood of Angara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Thank you for this wonderful uh, you know, a story from different sources, Maharaj. One question I have is, how do we understand the way they beget the, the, the children? It, it's so out of our you know, imagination how they carry the conception and then someone else will conceive. Uh, how, how do we even go about understanding these things? This is Shiva's potency. It's not something ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is nothing of this level of existence. This is in the level of the devas and on the highest level of the devas. But Shiva, he knew that this conception was going to bring about a, the personality who would come and assist Ram in his pastimes. <laughs> At least in the first narration, he knew. The second one, when he was from Rohini Murti, that was a little, that's explained differently. But both of these are actual detailed descriptions that happened at different manifestations of Hanuman's appearance. Because Hanuman appears slightly different each time he appears. Yes. There, there is a story in, uh, believed by some people in South India that that pastime of Mohini Murti, they also attribute uh, that to uh, Ayapa. I don't know if you have heard of that name, Maharaj, but very popular. Uh, mm -hmm. They claim uh, Ayapa was the one who was born uh, in that pastime, though I don't think any of the Vaishnavas uh, accept it. Uh, that's one thing I have heard. I know the group. I, they, always, they always dress in black. Yes, yes, yeah. Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're also very nice devotees. They're very... Very nice, but I, you know, they have their understanding, but we don't, we don't accept it. <laughs> we, uh... Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you, Srinivas Acharya. I hope to someday meet to... you once again. Please, Maharaj, uh, where are you right now? I want to come, I don't, if you are in the U.S., to see you, if you let me. <laughs> I was in the U.S., I had come to see you, but I'm not. Because <laughs> if I see you, I get to see your, your daughter and your good wife. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. I'm in, I'm in the country of Slovenia. <laughs> Oh, Slovenia. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. yeah. Right near our Iskan temple. Mm -hmm. mm. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> so good to see you again. And um, I really, yes. I really appreciate, um, oh, should I speak louder? I'm sorry. I really appreciate, um, yeah. I really appreciate what you said about um, Hanuman you know, his whole meditation is on serving Lord Ram and that mood of service um, in Hanuman really appeals to me. Um, I just heard another really sweet pastime about Hanuman um, wanting to, uh, all of the services had been, had been kind of taken up by other devotees because they felt like um, Hanuman always got to serve Lord Ram and they, they did not. So in this story, they had all taken up the, all of the services to Lord Ram and Hanuman was looking for something to do. So he actually took the service of when Lord Ram woke up in the mornings, when he would yawn, Hanuman would cover his mouth. That was the only service that was left. And um, I really just love that mood, that service mood. And I was wondering if you could maybe say a little something else about Hanuman's mood of service. <laughs> well, it's a kind of, it's a consciousness of what is called Dhrita Vrata, complete fixation upon serving and pleasing the object of service. The characteristic of Hanuman was, it didn't matter what it was, if the service was needed, he'd do it. So we might use a comparison where we may also be dedicated to service, but we may also be a little less surrendered when it comes to certain services or when services seem to be very difficult to do. But Hanuman never considered Srila Prabhupada was like that. He quoted a verse which was uh, from the Bhagavad Gita. And Vyasatvika Buhir Ekeha Kurunandana Buhu Shakya Yanatas Chaburiya Yavasahinam. It's 241 in the Bhagavad Gita. And Vishwanath uh, Chakravarti Thakur gives a commentary on this verse, which Prabhupada spoke about, but he also illustrated that mood in his uh, Krishna consciousness. And that is, Prabhupada said, I never considered whether it's easy or whether it's hard, it's the service. So Hanuman was on the same way. Cons not considering what is the nature of the service, whether it's going to be easy or hard and like that, but just to stay fixed in that service. And Prabhupada said, because I kept this mood, I was successful in preaching Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, you know, Prabhupada ran, across, ran in front of so many difficulties, obstacles, reverses, criticisms. So Prabhupada's obstacles that he had to encounter were numerous, but he never gave up his uh, determination to, to spread Krishna consciousness. It didn't matter. So that was the mood of Hanuman. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Hanuman had great powers, so he could perform these amazing feats of strength and which no one else could do. <laughs> he had been blessed by all the demigods in giving him so many various benedictions, which enhanced his, which gave him so many different types of powers. He had unlimited power. That's another one. Mm -hmm. So that's that. De that determination to serve is a success 
of Krishna consciousness. The difference between success and failure in Krishna consciousness is determination. Sometimes people say, well, what is the, what is the divide, dividing thing that makes something successful, something a failure? Determination. When determination is there, one can accept whatever they're faced with and work with that and continue on. When determination is weak or somehow not there, one will get, one will get uh, be t deterred from their service or give up their service for whatever reason. Determination is a, is a feature of the will. It's the feature of the will. So one has to make the will very strong. It, you know, I'll tell you a secret. And it's not a secret, but you can do anything you want. As long as it's within the range of Krishna consciousness. If you simply become, you simply will it. I will do this. And then by that determination, you you will open up the doors to get the knowledge you need to carry it out. That determination and the activities that follow will reveal what you need to know. Those who are not determined cannot see what to do or only see, they only, they only see the difficulties. Those who are determined go beyond the difficulties and can, they get the information how to succeed. Mm -hmm. It comes by way of that determination. And determination is fortified by giving up sense gratification. The more we give up sense gratification, the, the stronger our determination in Krishna consciousness becomes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj, and thank you for that very important and powerful tip. <laughs> um, it makes me want to um, work harder at being, a, at being a good devotee, trying harder as an aspiring devotee, and also looking at determination. I, and I'm, I'm very grateful for what you just said about um, the less we are prone to sense gratification, the stronger our determination will be. That's very important to remember. Yeah. Thank you so very much for that. Yeah. Accept, accept challenges as opportunities rather than uh, uh, reasons not to go forward. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. It's not easy, but it's the way for success. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, I was thinking while you are speaking, when you are talking about the demon uh, that came in between uh, when Hanuman was going, like how uh, Hanuman could, you know, trick that demon and he, demon automatically banned for him and then he said okay you have like you know you have you are so talented and then I could you know you are so then he it gives the way to go so here I was feeling like you know how if a pure devotion is there in a devotee uh, even Maya or any 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 demon any, any problems that are coming to us uh, will be you know automatically vanquished the determination and the pure devotion is needed for a devotee so like I was thinking when that past time you were explaining Yeah, determination comes with by associating with people who who have determination also. That association will also help bring about determination. 
Yeah. And I really liked the other pastime that you were sharing, like when Hanuman was going mountain, was wanted to offer him something. And then he said, uh, you were explaining that, you know, devotees, uh, uh, when they are serving, like, you know, all other things will come materially. So many things might come or some other things, but they don't, they don't get uh, entangled with that. And they just, you know, try to again, divert themselves to the Krishna consciousness. That point was really very nice because that we always see in our day-to-day -day life that, you know, something happens and then some happiness, uh, you just diverted with your path and then you, you'll be, you'll, you'll be, you know, uh, out of Krishna consciousness sometimes, even that is happiness or sad, sadness. That uh, point was really very striking, uh, Maharaj. I really like that point. You can't be Krishna consciousness if you're moved, if you're moved by happiness and distress. It's not possible. You have to push happiness and distress aside and can, can stay fixed in your service. Happiness comes, distress will come. You stay fixed in your service, that's all. The devotee's not trying to be happy, the devotee's trying to serve, that's all. That's the point. If you keep that in mind, it, whether I'm happy or not happy, it doesn't matter. That happiness will come by way of Krishna's mercy, not by trying to become happy by our own efforts. <laughs> yes, Maharaj, thank you so much for the strong point. Here, devotees are just to serve, not with happiness or anything. Yes, everything is Krishna's mercy. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah, if we keep that in our mind, uh, especially talking to myself, maybe I can progress more. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Anant Koti Dandvat Pranam, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Guru Dev Ki Jai, Shri Radha Gopinath Ki Jai. Maharaj, can I uh, add one story by your permission that is only for one minute? Please. Maharaj, uh, uh, I remember uh, that uh, uh, in childhood that uh, Sri Hanumanji, one time uh, just uh, sit with Sisi Sita, Sita Mata and Sita Mata is decorated her head with the Sindur. Then uh, Hanumanji is asking question to Sisi Sita Rani that, Ma, what is this? Then Sita Rani uh, explained, Sri Sita Rani explained that this is the for, uh, long life of uh, Lord Ram and uh, pleasure of Lord Ram. So the, he just run away Sri Hanumanji from there and then he decorate uh, himself with oil and sindur, full, full, full body with oil and sindur. <laughs> and then he came in a sabha uh, where the or Lord Ram, Shri, Lord Raksman and Sitarani is sitting there and everybody is laughing to Hanumanji that see how he looks, <laughs> the whole body, the oil and Sindur. But uh, uh, Lord uh, uh, Shri Hanumanji wants to please uh, Lord Rama. So this is our mood that how we should serve Shri, Shri Ram, Raksman and Sitarani and Shri Hanumanji. Hari Hari Gauranga. Thank you for bringing that story up. It's, it's a real sweet story. And uh, that's why sometimes you see in pictures of Hanuman, he's depicted as a red monkey, but he's actually a white monkey. His actual color is white. And so, but you'll see him red sometimes, and that's because of that pastime with the, the Sindhu. <laughs> Yes, Maharaj. In India, uh, those who are worship Sri Ram, uh, Sri uh, Hanumanji, uh, every Saturday they uh, offer oil and sindur uh, because uh, he is pleasing Lord Ram by that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. That was nice. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my blessings. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the very, very beautiful class and very nice narration. Can you can you hear me, Maharaj? Please loudly. Okay, one moment. 
so uh, very nice to know about the um, birth means appearance of uh, hanuman and you you said very detailed story so hanuman is called uh, um, pavanaputra means uh, son of uh, pavande so uh, so they, uh, my question is there are so many, so much uh, you told about uh, his appearance uh, but why he is called pavana uh, putra pavana Mm-hmm. Pavana Putra? Yeah. I never heard that one. Maybe someone else yeah, can answer that because question. Because in India, they, they say Pavana Putra Hanuman Ki Jai. Because um, he, he, um, the, the wind god, he, he carried the um, thing and that's why he was born. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Pavana is another name of uh, Vaideva. So uh, it comes from uh, Pu to purify. So Pavana is one who purifies, wind is a purifier. So therefore, uh, instead of saying Vaiputra, uh, Mataji is saying Pavana Putra, it's another name. Thank you, Srinivas. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just learned something. <laughs> um, uh, please accept my humble obedience as all close to Shri the Public Um, I had a question. When uh, I heard the different pastimes of Hunaman and if um, when he's restored of his po- um, powers, and I'm sorry, I forgot to turn my video on. When he's restored of his powers, is he able, actually able to have his powers for long periods of time after this, or is it only <clears throat> is it only um, each time he's uh, reminded, or is you no know, once he is reminded he keeps them? Or is each time he needs to use his powers, such as um, rescuing Mother Sita, is he allowed to keep those powers? Or is he have mm-hmm. to be every time he needs to use them <clears throat> because of his misuse disturbing the sages? Well, it appears that when he when he was reminded by Jambavan, when he jumped across the ocean, he didn't forget. <clears throat> No. And he continued to use his powers to destroy Lanka, and then and during the battle scenes, he he was using his powers then. So it seems like once he was reminded, at least in this particular occasion, he appeared to remember his powers. That's how it's. It's see, it doesn't doesn't. There's no description of. Body reminding him all the time of his powers. I, I, I was just checking, Maharaj. I really appreciate all of your sessions. Before, many, many years ago, when I didn't know anything about Krishna Conscious, Friday, I said before, before knowing anything about Krishna Consciousness, Friday used to be my favorite day because it was the end of work, etc. And I get to spend time with my children. But now my favorite Friday is because of you, Maharaj. I really appreciate you're being so personal with us and allowing us to talk to you like a regular person. And we know you are so much, much more. I am so grateful. Thank you so much, Maharaj. My obeisances to you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Very good. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Maharaj, whatever Flavier Mataji said, that's very true. Fridays are very special for us because of you. Mm-hmm. You, are, you are so, you know, friendly and you, you allow us to talk to you and talk really nicely. So it's, it's so nobody nice. Talks to, yeah, nobody talks to me anyway, so I get a chance to talk to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
I'm getting blessed to be able to associate with all the devotees. We are very blessed, Maharaj, because of you every Friday. Thank you. I'll uh, be here every Friday as long as, long as Krishna la lets me. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Okay, so maybe we should conclude here. And uh, thank you very much. And thank you for all the devotees and giving. Thank you for in contributing to some of the wonderful alilas of Hanuman. Uh, it's unlimited. And there's much more than there is to be said about Hanuman. Okay, so my obeisances to everyone. All glories to Sitaram, Lakshman, Hanumanji. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. And all glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna, Lalita, and Dina Bandhu. What happened to Dina Bandhu? I don't see him. Yes, uh, he was up all night because it's his spiritual master, Jai Pataka Maharaj's Vyas Puja. Oh, right, 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 right. So now he is recovering from the festival. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Jai Bhattaka Maharaj Ki Jai. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll, we'll meet again somewhere on the on the internet. Alita Tangi, how are you? We cannot hear Mataji. Mataji, what happened? He's muted. You're able to hear now? Yes. Yeah, please accept my respectful obeisances, Maharaj. Uh, such a beautiful class. Um, you know, every time I fall short of words because uh, it's uh, what the, the effect of your association, it cannot be explained in, in words. And so many nice uh, pearl-like statements today about determination and how to serve the spiritual master, how to be fixed. And all these things, um, you know, comes out of your mouth. And uh, uh, when you yourself are a shining example for all this throughout your life, and we are, uh, you know, getting your association. So we are very, very fortunate uh, on, uh, on this appearance day of my uh, spiritual master. I beg at your lotus feet uh, to get me this opportunity to always um, be in this mood of service and consciousness like how your life uh, you have uh, demonstrated through your life that's my prayer Guru Maharaj so by the grace of Srila Prabhupada nothing else can be said other than it's Srila Prabhupada's mercy it's only Srila Prabhupada's mercy but on another note when it comes to talking about monkeys, I'm pretty good at that. Sorry? I said when it comes to talking about monkeys, I'm good at talking oh, about Krishna, monkeys. Oh, Krishna, no. <laughs> yes, Maharaj, your services are like Hanuman. You know, there is no, there is no comparison to Hanuman and Hanuman's mode of service. So that's true. <laughs> I'm like the, the part of when Hanuman was harassing all the other sages, and that's the, that's the, that's where I come in. Oh, Maharaj, <laughs> that's exactly opposite, Maharaj. Actually, we are like that, and you're trying to, you know, show us your example so that we may become uh, sober. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you and all your wonderful family in Charlotte. So thank you all of the devotees, my obeisances. It's a courtesy here, so, so we're trying to use every moment to chant the holy names of the Lord. So today is a wonderful day for absorbing ourselves in Krishna's holy name. And special mercy is available on this day for those who 
who make determination to just chant, chant, and chant. <laughs> Maharaj, I just want to say you something. Uh, Bhakti Sangha Chepa conference call is hosting all night Ekadasi chanting. Please give your blessings so that we can continue this Ekadasi chanting. Uh, Maharaj, please. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. All night and all day. The holy name is the ocean of unlimited blessings. As soon as we tap into the chanting of the holy name, we open up so much mercy. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you, and I must move on to my next service. Maharaj, our Vinita Gandhi are doing whole night Japa, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. I would like to offer my obeisances to you and all the Vaishnavas assembled here. Vancha Kalpa Tarupiasya Kripa Sindhu Bhye Vicha Patitana Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavya Nanta Koti Vaishnavya Rindhi Ki Jai Shila Prabhupad Ki Jai Please Holiness Chandra Moli Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Thank you.